And now, the magic of makeup and a blow dryer. And through the magic of time, makeup, and a hair blower dryer, would be called a hair dryer? A blow dryer. That's it, a, a blow dryer. Voila, a little more presentable for the day. And um, try to look into the camera and not into me. It's really uncomfortable. I have to say the camera's a little uncomfortable for me. Um, so, t-shirt, these white pants that the dogs walked on the other day got washed. A little hair dry. Not much. 15 minutes and I'm ready to go. So, um, hmm. Um, yes, I'm ready. And you know, I'm pretty darn blessed right now in my life to have have the comforts of the things I need and I'm excited about figuring out what I can live without and how much I can live without because obviously we become pretty minimalist uh, living in a van or um, you know even a motorhome um, won't have all of the things um, or the endless showers um, unless I get a hour shower from gone boondocking at some point I will be looking into that um, so again today we're taking you on our day and here we go father-in-law and to have our dogs anal glands taken care of Uh oh I don't think she was excited about having everybody know that well she can't think about it too, too long because she's gonna stand strong and get her done it's, it's caused her to have a little abscess, which apparently can happen. We normally have this done about every three months, but we're going to have it done every month now. It's not expensive. We just didn't know that it would cause a, 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 an issue. Right. So um, it's a gorgeous day here. Beautiful blue skies, a few little puffy white uh, clouds. I don't know what the, uh, how hot it is here. It's not hot. Um, probably in the 50s, I imagine, mid-50s, uh, but we're going to do, um, like Richard said, we're going to see my, fa my father. Uh, we're going to first take Patty for her little appointment and uh, see my dad and then maybe stop by a park, take her for a walk through the Rose Garden on the way home. So, uh, that is our day. Well, and then at five o'clock, we're, we're going to be home for certain because, uh, we like to watch a couple of, um, uh, live chats. One with Gone Boondocking, David with Gone stream. Boondocking, stream, live stream. And then the other one, um, I really enjoy is... Deborah Dickinson, TBI Van Girl. Um, I get a lot of encouragement watching people who've had barriers go out on the road and be able to not just overcome them, but thrive with them. And that's something that I've learned from Deborah. Um, I saw today also that Box Van D is going to have a live stream on Sunday, and I'm really happy it's Sunday because both of us like this afternoon both of the live streams we like to watch are on at the same exact time five o'clock and so um, one or the other wasn't gotten watched and so now uh, we're gonna just split it up and I'm gonna watch Deborah and Richard's gonna watch David hopefully hopefully if er if all works out that's yes. the way it will work you know, in life, things don't always work out the way you want them to, but we hope they will. We're going to do the best we can to see it through. And that means to watch the whole thing in my book. 
Right, David has a lot of technical stuff that we learned so much from. And um, that hour shower, I really like. I know it. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? It's hard to believe <laughs> that no one before him thought of the idea of it. I mean, I'm sure it crossed somebody's mind along the years. But he has the. He's got the engineering mind to do it, so he did it. And history, so yep, he did it. He's a brilliant man. And then I love watching Deborah because I get a lot of spiritual. A feeding from her and her viewers and it touches me in a way that helps me feel like I can do this too and I think the same thing's going to happen with uh, Box Van D on Sunday so that's what's up for today folks here in the Willamette Valley not the Willamette like I've heard it pronounced Willamette just in case anybody's that that bus is a bus I would like to have I think that would be a perfect size bus for us but we do not have the means to get a hold of that kind of bus at this time but I'd be shooting for that down the road maybe um, we don't really have the means to do anything right now we're working on it and if my back is screwed up I don't get healed pretty soon we're not gonna have the means very soon because we certainly are hoping to be able to be at the um, RTR next year WRTR and RTR and I'd like to do some of the summer events too and save some money and get a rig of some sort uh, hopefully an E50 E350 extended van. That's the only one I can imagine will be big enough for us to get started in. Right. Because we need, I mean, I really feel like I need something close to, and I keep saying this over and over, a queen size bed. Not necessarily fully length queen size, because we're both in the mid five foot range. I'm five foot three now, and lost height from uh, all of my back surgeries and Richard's about 5'5 five, five or so right now because of his uh, crumbling spine and back surgeries. So we've lost height. We are no longer in need of the length of a queen size bed, but you know, just I have heard and I do believe what I hear about this. On the road, you do need a good night's, you need to be able to have a decent night's sleep. And so, um, that's what we're shooting for. Um, In everyday life, you need a good night's sleep anyway. We have a king-size bed right now that we are sleeping on. And that's wonderful. It's like a land unto your own self. I didn't go... Darn it. I didn't go to get Patty's thing done first. No. I'm going to make a right hand. I'm going to squeeze in here folks. Right hand. I'm going to go off here and no, go downtown. No, go off here. No. Oh, you're going to go downtown? Yes, to um, suds them yourself. Okay. Okay. Here we are, leaving downtown Eugene. We just had our dog's glands expressed. She made it through without dying, which is real good. Um, Did they give her a treat? Yes, they're in my pocket. They're very hard. She doesn't have teeth because she's 19 years old that she can chew with. She could, but not much of them left. And these are very hard treats. So uh, I think we should save them for the big dog at home and give her the soft treats we yes. have at home. Yes, that's a good idea. So now we are headed over to my dad's nursing home, which is about, oh, five miles or so away from here. Lot, lot to do here. Right ahead is uh, called Skinner Butte. Um, this uh, Eugene Skinner and his wife Mary founded Eugene, man, 150 ago. years ago, something like that. Um, and on the other side of that butte is the Mackenzie River. The Mackenzie River runs through Eugene. We've got a whole park system on it. And we're going to take you through that uh, one of these videos coming up. And um, 
the uh, so that's what's on the other side of that little mountain over there is a beautiful park called the Skinner Butte Park I watched a woman um, on YouTube last night very successful youtuber and she was her video was about planning your time um, so that you can get done what you need to get done because saying you're too busy doesn't really cut it and I uh, was trying to get to sleep early last night to get up and have this part of our day done before noon and right now what is it about one o'clock Richard it is 10 minutes to one 10 minutes to one okay so I'm running about what I was hoping would have been about three hours ago running three hours behind on the right uh, behind us would be the University of Oregon a lot of these people are coming from that area <clears throat> that building on the right is the eWeb office some of eWeb's office building tell them what eWeb is eWeb is the Eugene Water and Electric Board and they are a monopoly and, and they charge outrageous fees for electricity and water. I cannot wait till the day we do not have to pay what we have to pay for utilities. I mean, really, it's one of the things I look forward to is never having to give them another dime. And I am a little emotional about it because people who don't have a lot of money and need utilities get screwed. And there's just not a nice way to say that. There are so many people that cannot afford the electricity and water in this city it's just terrible and I really need to stay in this line I I'm fairly uh, comfortable with being patient when I drive I don't like to go this slow eWeb built a brand new humongous office building west of town and they just barely have anything here mm -hmm. in this office. Take payments there. Yeah, they take your payment. And uh, tell them about that. We've had two tickets. Uh, not me, but I'll go ahead and say we. We've had two tickets crossing this bridge right here. The motorcycle police hide really well right back there. And yep, two tickets. And when driving is not on your mind you're just doing it automatically and you're in a hurry to get somewhere and there's nobody in front of you the road's clear it's very easy to go over the speed limit uh oh i just misled you that was the willamette river not the mckinsey i didn't know that was the willamette richard this one yeah yes oh look at the nice sports car that i guarantee you is an athlete's car can you read what that says? What that is? Nope. Nope, me neither. So... It's not a cheap vehicle, I'll tell you that. No, uh-uh. It's not a wannabe either. It's a real one. Whatever it is. You can kind of tell those cars apart. I don't know. I don't... Didn't there there were Lamborghinis in Brent's apartment complex. Lamborghinis. Yeah, yeah. Maserati. Um, Maserati. There was a Maserati, nice Maserati. I don't know. That starts with an M. Or an a M. It looks like an M. Maserati? Is, is it Maserati? Can't tell what it says. I know. It doesn't look like... Maserati though. No, it I does don't not. see a T and an I. I do see an M. Dual exhaust, it gets up and moves anyway. Yep, and there are police on this road, so I'm hard pressed to go more than 40 when it's a 35. And he ain't speeding too bad. <clears throat> We're getting ready to go by Otson Stadium home of the Oregon Duck football team that won the Pac-12 title this year and then went and won also the Rose Bowl. Right there. I am an alumni of the Oregon, University of Oregon about 10 years ago. This uh, 
on the Eugene side, it's called Martin Luther King Boulevard. And on the Springfield side, it is Centennial Boulevard. It was originally named Centennial Boulevard. It was... Um, it's Martin Luther King in here, too. I just told him it was Martin Luther King. And it was... It, when they built this, they named it for the centennial of our our state. Well, the MLK um, people came in uh, that were supporters in this town, strong supporters. Yep, there he goes, off to where I knew he'd go. The apartments of the... Um, so, the back to the road, um, it was the city decided to rename it MLK, Martin Luther King Boulevard. Uh, many of us who live in Eugene wanted the the new, brand new road in front of the biggest hospital in the region to be named MLK. So we're not sure why they felt the need to change an already existing road instead of giving Martin Luther King the honor of a brand new road. Um, Springfield chose to keep it Centennial Boulevard because their people in that city, that town, wanted it Centennial Boulevard to stay yet they, Centennial. Yet they changed Pioneer Parkway to Martin Luther King Boulevard. I know it. They've split it up in a weird way. Yep, it can be very confusing if you're not from the area. <clears throat> so anyways, we're now in Springfield. We're in eastern, or excuse me, western Springfield. I'm heading to my father's. Which isn't far from here. No. Uh, he's not doing so hot today. He's in a lot of pain. Um, he has, as I've said in the past, my father has a severe back condition. Um, well, I don't know if I have. He needs a seven level effusion. And there isn't a neurosurgeon in town that will touch him because the, uh, the thoughts are he would probably die on the operating table due to some of his other complications. So um, he ha and that's part of the reason that he has become completely paralyzed from the waist down. Well, that is the reason. So they try to keep him comfortable with pain medication, just very mild, moderate pain medication. Um, and most of the time he's up in his motorized wheelchair going to the cafeteria area, eating his meals down there, reading his newspaper. Going to events. Going to events. They have a lot of music here. And he loves music. Him and, him and my mom used to go to dances all the time. Um, they were very involved in that manner. Um, they also, uh, my dad was a fireman, so there were events uh, for families and couples um, and lots of things to do, and they were very active people. So this has been a hard pill for my dad to swallow. But he's handled it with more grace than I actually thought he would because he's such an independent person. And he still fights it. He still tries to figure out a way to be not paralyzed. He still tries to figure out a way to um, get around <clears throat> so that he can come back and live at the house he built. But there just really isn't a realistic way for that to happen. The house he built in 1975? Something like that, yeah. 1975. I was in... A seventh grade. I was going into seventh grade, I believe. Well, I'm glad they taught you how to pound nails into a floor. I know. Pounded nails into a floor. Other places. Oh my God, this. Oh, we do need a parking space today. This is a very full parking lot today. Wondering what's going on that I don't know about. We try to keep up on activities so that we can participate with them. Well, we don't always know when they are. All right, so we're here. I'm going to shut it off and I'll be back with you.